I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief. Today's top stories in four minutes. It's Wednesday, September 26th at about 7.30 p.m. For the past couple of years, people who care about journalism and the American political system have been extremely concerned not only about how facts are interpreted, but about the inability to agree on what the facts themselves are. Nothing seems to be black and white anymore. Everything seems to be gray. Even then, we can't agree on what the gray means. Kellyanne Conway famously called it alternative facts. That was a much ridiculed slip of the tongue, but it may have perfectly encapsulated our current reality. Do Democrats really believe that Brett Kavanaugh, at 16 or so, operated as part of a conspiracy at parties to drug or get girls drunk so they could get gang raped? That's one of the accusations leveled by the newest accuser represented by Michael Avenatti. Are Republicans really confident that with all these allegations about Kavanaugh, all this smoke, that there might not have been some fire? If they are confident, then why not let the FBI look into it? At a rare and long solo press conference, Trump claimed the FBI would have found nothing and that it wouldn't have mattered because people wouldn't have believed the FBI anyway. He might be right, but I'll never understand why Republicans didn't call for a quick extension of the FBI's background checks. Kavanaugh again denied the new accusations, calling them, quote, ridiculous and from the twilight zone. He denied even knowing the new accuser. In his press conference, Trump said the Democrats were perpetrating a con job, both on Kavanaugh and in the Russia meddling investigation. Meanwhile, Trump chaired a meeting of the UN Security Council, only the third time that has ever been done by a U.S. president. Trump accused the Chinese of interfering in the midterm elections because, quote, they do not want me or us to win, arguing that China is frustrated with this tough line on trade. The Chinese denied meddling, calling the accusations unwarranted. Secretary of State Pompeo is planning on visiting North Korea next month. He said messages from North Korea are consistent with the intent to denuclearize. He echoed South Korean President Moon, who said Kim is serious about giving up his bombs, and Trump at the news conference said he had, quote, received magnificent, beautiful letters from Kim. At the UN General Assembly, there was a flurry of activity on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Trump met with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, saying he likes the two-state solution. Jordan's King Abdullah said there is no alternative to the two-state solution, while Egyptian President Sisi said the ongoing conflict undermines UN authority. Top Israeli opposition leader Sipi Livni met in New York with Palestinian Authority President Abbas, pushing him to reopen talks with the U.S. And in England, Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn said his party would recognize a Palestinian state if it takes power. Cacophony? Little progress. Trump also made it clear that all options were on the table with Venezuela, even what he called the strong ones. Reports today say the military option is gaining backers in the U.S. as millions flee what was once Latin America's richest country. A catastrophic and corrupt socialist government has caused a refugee crisis that is believed to be the continent's worst ever. If that weren't enough, Trump rejected a meeting with Justin Trudeau, complaining in his press conference that the Canadians are not negotiating in good faith on a new deal to replace NAFTA, and that Canadian negotiators have taken advantage of the U.S. in the past, imposing harsh tariffs he said have treated American farmers very badly. Trump seems to treat allies and foes about the same these days. In our alternate universe segment, The Great Divide Between Conservative and Liberal Media, headlines make a difference. USA Today had one on Wednesday that said four people corroborated Christine Blasey Ford's accusations against Kavanaugh. Technically true, because corroborate can mean support. But the corroboration came from her husband and three friends who say she told them about the alleged assault decades later. If you read that headline and limited yourself to it, as people often do, you probably would have thought that they were contemporaneous accounts from witnesses or people she told back in the 80s. Some news organizations were more careful. Finally, Trump joked at the press conference that ABC, CBS, NBC, and New York Times were going to endorse him because if they didn't, they were all going to go out of business. He asked, can you imagine if you didn't have me? He didn't get much of a laugh. I can imagine being beaten down by his constant accusations of fake news and being called enemies of the people, but it was kind of funny. We have all those stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week on newsandnews.com where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News. Follow me on Twitter at Amora TV and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. 
I'll see you again tomorrow.